Isaac and his mother lived alone in a small house on a hill. Isaac kept to himself, drawing pictures and playing with his toys as his mom watched Christian broadcasts on the television. Life was simple, and they were both happy. That was until the day Isaac's mom heard a voice from above. Your son has become corrupted by sin. He needs to be saved. I will do my best to save him, my lord, Isaac's mother replied, rushing into Isaac's room, removing all that was evil from his life. Again, the voice called to her. Isaac's soul is still corrupt. He needs to be cut off from all that is evil in this world and confess his sins. I will follow your instructions, Lord. I have faith in thee, Isaac's mother replied as she locked Isaac in his room away from the evils of the world. One last time, Isaac's mom heard the voice of God calling to her. You've done as I've asked, but I still question your devotion to me to prove your faith. I will ask one more thing of you. Yes, Lord, anything, Isaac's mother begged. To prove your love and devotion, I require a sacrifice. Your son, Isaac, will be this sacrifice. Go into his room and end his life as an offering to me to prove you love me above all else. Yes, Lord, she replied, grabbing a butcher's knife from the kitchen. Isaac, watching through a crack in his door, trembled in fear. Scrambling around his room to find a hiding place, he noticed a trap door to the basement hidden under his rug. Without hesitation, he flung open the hatch, just as his mother burst through his door and threw himself down into the unknown depths below. Hey everybody, and welcome to a new series, technically, this is The Binding of Isaac Repentance. Uh, this is one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, I play it all the time, although this is uh, under a different account than I normally play on, so I don't have everything unlocked or stuff like that. You may wonder where the face cam is that's normally here. Uh, the face cam, uh, there's relevant information in like all corners of this game, so it's kind of hard to have the face cam up. Maybe I'll find a way in the future, but for now, we're just going to play a little bit. Now, for those of you who don't know, uh, The Binding of Isaac is a popular roguelike uh, game. And what that means is you essentially you start a run, you attempt to beat it, and if you die, you go all the way back to the beginning and you have to start over. Um, but there's a ton of stuff to unlock, ton of bosses to beat, just a ton of cool things to see. And so, I'm going to play some of it. Sounds good. I mean, I think so. So we're going to come in here to New Run, and you can select your character. We, uh, there's a ton of characters to play as, but uh, we only have one unlocked for right now, and that's Isaac, the titular game character. Uh, there's multiple modes that you can play as, and we'll play all of them at some point, no doubt. Um... But in this case, I believe that we're just going to play on normal. Okay? So, in The Binding of Isaac, you have all these different rooms. The rooms have enemies in them. The enemies try to kill you. You shoot your tears at them to kill them. In case you wondered, for either from that and from the opening cutscene, the game's also kind of messed up. So... If you're, if you're particularly sensitive to messed up games, maybe uh, don't watch this one. Obviously there'll be more Elden Ring coming out, like almost every other day. But in the game you can find items, like in this item room. And in this particular item room we found Iron Bar. 
which gives you a slight damage increase, and also Concussive Tears, which is a special tier effect. It makes it so that uh, different enemies will sometimes become confused when you hit them with your tears. I'm also just going to come in here really quick, and I'm just going to come over to this thing. So that we turn off that extra information on the side. That That's like a, a little feature that lets you just see a, a numerical representation of your stats and stuff, which I like to have up at all times because I like that sort of thing. But I could also see how it would become distracting, so we're not going to, uh, not going to have that up for now, unless you guys want it to be up. I don't know. This is a little mini boss. Many bosses are like regular bosses, except, you know, many. <laughs> I apologize, this, if this is the first episode, probably going to be a lot of explanation, and not a huge amount of like relevant commentary, but uh, that boss, mini boss, Pride, uh, sometimes drops the Anarchist's Cookbook, which is an active item, which you can see up in the upper left hand corner. He also broke into a, a secret room. Which is, uh, a room. It's secret. I do- I would never have looked for the secret room there, I'll be honest with you. Um... But the active items, uh, can be used, and you can see... Af after they're used, they can be- they need to be recharged. So you can see there's a little green bar right by, uh, the item. And that green bar will fill up with, uh, as we complete rooms, and we can, uh keep using it after that's done. This is the shop where you can buy stuff for your money that we've been picking up. Right now shops are really, really lame, like really lame, but there's this donation machine bag here which uh, we can donate to over the course of several runs and that will uh, allow us to upgrade the shop which is uh, pretty cool and pretty important. I'm going to put two cents in there. Why only two? I'll hopefully be able to explain next floor. This is the boss of this floor though. Monstro. The boss is not always Monstro. Uh, there's different floors and whatnot, and those floors will often have a sets of different bosses that can show up, so Monstro is only just one of several bosses that can show up on the first floor. But he's not too difficult, especially with our concussive tears that we can use to confuse him so that we can get a couple extra shots in. He does a bunch of little jumping attacks, little blood spray attacks. They're pretty cool. I'm tempted to use Anarchist's Cookbook, but it what the Anarchist Cookbook does is it uh, spawns a bunch of uh, bombs around everywhere like Pride was doing. Um, which can be useful in some situations, but most of the time I just end up getting myself hurt with it. Then we picked up Caffeine Pill from the boss, which gives us a random pill which we can use, and pills have random effects more or less, they're randomized each run. Health down. And that pill was terrible. To the next floor! As you can see, there are multiple floors that we'll go through before we get to the final floor. And then the final floor will be, I believe, floor number six on this run. You unlock further floors after that one, though. This is another mini boss, which you'll notice all the mini bosses. I don't know if I said this earlier, the, uh, a lot of the mini bosses are based off of the seven sins, seven deadly sins, so. If you find that cool. Also, if you're like super offended by like uh, religious things. And by offended by religious things, I mean like if you don't like people speaking poorly about organized religion, this game might not be the best thing for you. I don't know. I don't know. But more importantly, back to the game at hand. Uh, from the second floor on, there's a uh, system that we uh, can use to help us get more cooler items. 
Uh, and that is the deal with the devil system. Which, you know, religion, yay. Um, dang it. Uh, which basically, on every floor up to a certain point, beyond the first floor, there's a chance when you beat the boss to get a random deal with the devil to show up, where you can trade your red heart containers for powerful items, which are uh, very useful. But in order to get that, you see how we have uh, red hearts and blue hearts up there? I'll pick that up in a second. The red hearts are basically refillable heart containers a la Zelda kind of stuff. Uh, and the blue hearts are called spirit hearts, and when we lose them, they're gone for good. Spirit hearts, uh, they, I mean, they're both useful in certain situations, but on floors where you can get a deal with the devil, if you take red heart damage, your chances of getting a deal with the devil go down an incredibly large amount, so we want to avoid taking red heart damage, if at all possible. Stapler, damage up. I, I'll be honest with you, I don't 100%, I mean, it says damage up. Uh, and this is another cool item inside the item room, Daddy Long Legs, which you'll see what it does here in a second. It's also important to note that, uh, oh yeah, so that's what Daddy Long Legs does. Um, it's also important to note that there are several expansions for this game, all of which I own. Uh... But I only recently came into ownership of Repentance, the most recent one. So there's quite a few items and stuff that I've never seen before, many bosses I've never fought before. I've only played a little bit with it. Uh, I'm sure you saw that third save file as I opened up the game. So, just a bunch of cool stuff that we get to discover together. I'm sure that at one point or another I'll explain all of the various things that I'm doing. Uh, I feel as though if I explain everything right now, it'll probably get super overwhelming and not very fun. A blue map has appeared in the basement. But you see, that's why we want to donate to the donation machine, because we can unlock new items and upgrade the shop and whatnot. And you can see that the donation machine jammed, so you can't just donate as much money as you could possibly donate each run. This game also tends to be pretty fast-paced. Um, I don't think I've had a run through from start to end credits rolling that lasted longer than about an hour. Uh, which, most of the runs aren't going to be that long, I don't think. Um, but they might be, I have no idea. Uh, so it's, it's not really a sort of series where you have to watch each episode to understand everything that goes on, although I'm sure we'll be unlocking different things and different items and different episodes that might show up in later ones and so on and so forth. I'm basically, Monstro's Tooth has appeared in the basement, and on your first couple runs you unlock just a crap load of stuff. I'm honestly... Oh, well, first, before I say anything else, let's pick up this item, the booster pack, which is a Magic the Gathering reference, which drops a whole bunch of uh, tarot cards, all of which have different uses, uh, and we can use all of them differently. I don't know how many of them we'll be able to use in this floor, but first, you see this door? This is our deal with the devil door. We're going through there. And I have no idea what this item does. It looks kind of like a cross. I have no idea though, so let's pick it up. Blood Oath. Bleed me dry. Well, it's created a little familiar that's following us around. No clue what that familiar does though. So, like I said, I'll explain all of these things at some point. Uh... But if I explain all of them right now, it might get overwhelming. So basically, I'm going to take this tarot card, the Fool, and it allows us to teleport when we use it. It gets used up when we use it, uh, but we immediately teleport to the starting room. Uh, so in this case, we're going to come down to this room, which is a curse room, which can have special stuff in it, but it damages you on the way in and the way out. 
So, for instance, in this curse room, we had a couple red chests, one of which teleported us back to the deal with the devil that we already went to, so whatever, I guess. And then that go uh, red chest gave us some more spirit hearts, and then we can use the fool card to teleport out without taking a whole heart's worth of damage. So that's cool. And then we can come uh, back up. You know, let's try here for another secret room. Yeah. Plus, I also, I don't know how to explain things in a way that doesn't sound super annoying, because, like, it, it's not on this, uh, particular account, but on the account where I do have, where I have played a bunch, I've played, like, some crazy, like, I don't know, 600, 700 hours or so of this game. So I know a lot, and I don't want to come off as, like, super annoying, but I also don't want to, like, go without explaining things, and so things are very difficult for me. But out of all these cards, they all have their uses at different times, but probably the most useful one that dropped is this Joker card, so we're gonna take that down with us to the next floor. So there's a Joker card. Once we use it, what the f- Okay. I have no idea what that just did, but our little stabby friend stabbed us. And it took away some of our red hearts, but we can still get them back. I'm gonna assume it probably sacrificed those for like a bit of damage, maybe? I have no idea. In this room, this is a challenge room, where you can enter it if you have the right amount of health, uh, and you can get the stuff inside for a certain amount of uh, hearts and whatnot. So we were able to get that heart that we lost back, and also fight a whole bunch of people. I'm also uh, looking at the little preview I have in OBS of uh, this, and it's looking a little fuzzy for some reason. I'll see how it looks in post and see if I need to, like, change it. There's not a huge amount that I'm going to be able to do with this first episode. Um, but if it's, like, super blurry, please let me know, and I will try and record in a non-blurry fashion. I don't know why it's doing that. And that's another live bomb, which is fun. We're gonna go into this curse room, because I think that that's wise. It wasn't wise. The curse rooms are pretty much always a gamble. Uh, sometimes they're credible, sometimes they're literally just damaging, so you have to make a judgment call as to whether or not they're worth it. Which, hey, luckily my judgment is always sound. Always. But we, so far we've got a pretty good run going here. We seem to have pretty decent damage. I would have a better indicator of that if I kept the little found hub up, HUD up. But, you know. Maybe I'll turn that on next episode. Daddy Longlegs is a great item. Magneto, which is this item, is not a great item, but it still has its uses. What it does is it, uh, essentially pulls in any items that are, uh far away from you, like a magnet. I also, so obviously, like I said, I know not pretty much nothing about the Repentance stuff, but all the stuff from the previous expansions I know quite a bit about, but I'm also not going to, like, explain what every single item does in the entire game in the first episode. I figure we'll just explain things as they come up, and if there's something new, like this stabby thing, We'll just, you know, learn together and internalize that ourselves. We can also... And you can see the key getting moved towards us. We can come into our shop and maybe buy an item since we can't uh, donate anymore. And so you can see... For five cents you can buy a bomb, which is not what I meant to do because I was going to buy this item, but whatever. 
that's fine. I'm not bothered at all. Hopefully we'll be able to get five more cents before the uh, floor is up. And this looks like a secret room, so... Who was right? Oh, my face. We're actually, we're gonna have to be careful, because if our little stabby friend really does hurt us at the start of every floor, we're gonna want to make sure that that won't kill us at the start of every floor. <laughs> so... Oh well, I gotta take less damage. Who could have figured that would be a problem? Ah, oh, I really thought... So basically, in each floor there are two secret rooms. Uh... Which... The differences between them are... Uh, one has... Cooler stuff, and the other has less cool stuff, but they both have cool stuff, and they have different stuff. Uh... But your second secret rooms... Uh, can't be found in the same situations as the... Uh, basically, it's hard to explain, uh, but the regular secret room, which is what this one was, uh, will be bordered by multiple other rooms, and the second secret room won't be bordered by... it will only be bordered by one other room. So... Little things. Little things. The item we picked up from the shop just there uh, was called the habit, which is a little nun's habit, uh, and what that does is it makes it so that when you take damage, it, uh, gives you a charge on your active item, which is pretty useful. It's not super useful right now with the item that we have, but it might become useful in the future. Wow, Anarchist Cookbook really worked out for us there. And we got Blue Cap, which is pretty explicit. Uh, Self-explanatory on what that does. And we got another deal with the devil. For the mark. Which is what this item is. Which is damage and speed up. Obviously some of the uh, items are pretty self-explanatory as to what they do. Others are less common and I'll explain those if I know how to explain them. You may also be wondering, I don't think I, I don't remember if I explained this, uh, yeah, yeah, our little stabby friend definitely stabs us. You may be wondering what this Joker card that we picked up on, like, the second floor is gonna do for us. Uh, well, firstly, we're gonna take these pills, because I like to live dangerously. Luck down. down. Terrible. Health up. Pretty alright. Tears up. Fantastic. Telepills. We love Gonna have to go back into that thing for our Joker card. The Joker card teleports you to the deal with the devil on that floor, which is uh, very useful if you have the hearts to be able to take the deal. If you don't, obviously it's not so useful, but strategy, you know? I like strategy. Surely you like strategy. Another good thing about not having a face cam on uh, this, these videos, is the fact that because I need both hands to play this game, just because the way the controls are set up, I can't like make my little exaggerated hand gestures that I usually do. So it's a tiny little thing, but it's a little thing that I appreciate. And sometimes the little things are what bring us the most joy in life. So remember that the next time they tell you that size doesn't matter. Alright, so in this room we get Backstabber, which is not a very good item, or at least it's not an item that I like very much. It uh, makes it so that when you hit enemies in the back, you do extra damage. Which is useful, except for the fact that, uh, you know, how often are you deliberately aiming for an enemy's back? That's a battery. We can use who's that to charge our active item. And it looks like it gave us a double charge, so we can use it twice in one room if we want to. That must be a fancy battery, which I'm guessing they added in Repentance. I think it also... I think Backstabber also makes it so that you inflict bleeding on your enemies when you uh, hit them in the back. So, I don't know. We obviously have found our boss, and we've been going pretty fast, actually. 
I'm not intentionally rushing, we've just had pretty good luck on this run so far. Although, I've certainly had runs that are a lot faster than this. But I'm sure we'll see some of those at some point. What was, what was, I was gonna say something, what was the point of that? I don't know. This game, there's a lot of information in it. Here's another mini-boss, which can sometimes show up in shops, called Greed. He drops a bunch of money, which is cool. But there's a lot of information that goes on in this ver in this game, and it's a lot to cover, and I can't cover it all in one possible episode, so... If this gets annoying, or if you're like, oh my lord, this is too much, I'm sorry. That's, that one's on me. But, still gonna play the game because the game's freaking cool. Except for bombs. Because I don't like bombs. But the bomb found the second secret room, which is cool. And it has a bunch of pills. Health up. Health up. Speed up. Speed up. And other telepills, which, as we saw earlier, teleports you to a random room. Shot speed up, which makes the speed of your shots go up. Who could have guessed? Balls of steel. That's probably one of my favorite pill effects. It gives us two spirit hearts. Which is incredibly useful, considering we were down to only one. So now we can fight the boss. Dirty. Dirty is pretty... Pretty average difficulty boss. He's, he doesn't move around, but he spawns enemies, and he's pretty tanky, so he can be difficult to deal with. Luckily, Anarchist Cookbook has been working out fantastically for us in this run so far. And we unlocked a new item for later, a little chubby, and we got HP, but we didn't get a deal with the devil, so I'm going to use our Joker card, which gives us two items. And we're gonna take both of them. And we unlocked Azazel, because we took a bunch of deals with the devil. So we got Rotten Baby, which puts out these flies that damage things and are, are really cool. And we're also gonna pick up Guppy's Paw, which is an item that takes your red hearts and turns them into spirit hearts, but it turns them into three spirit hearts. So we can take the health that we have and turn it into well, unlocking Lazarus for one, but uh, for two, getting a whole bunch of spirit hearts. We've lost all our red hearts, but I think we have more survivability in the grand scheme of things. We could take Guppy's Paw with us to the next floor, but I'm actually kind of liking Anarchist Cookbook for us right now. It seems to have worked out pretty well. So we're going to leave Guppy's Paw, and we're going to go to the next floor because there's nothing else for us to do. Woo! Shift around in my chair a little bit. And we're on the second to last floor already. The depths one. I don't know why. I mean, it seems like the red chests are opening before I want them to open. This is a stone chest, which is uh, made of stone. We have to blow it up. Oh, so that's cool. It had an item in it. Torn photo. Tears plus shot speed up. Very useful. Also, our stabby knife friend didn't stab us this time. So I guess he only stabs you if you have red hearts. That's important to note. Also, another thing is there's these rocks that have X's on them called tinted rocks, and you can blow them up for stuff. And, you know, that's very useful. I don't really know what to say beyond it's really useful. They're very hard to spot, especially because in Repentance they changed how the rocks look, so my internalized memory of all the freaking rocks in the game is no longer accurate. So, whatever, I guess. I guess I wasted 600 hours of my life, whatever. But we're clearing rooms, going fast, faces past, and I'm home gal. Uh, we've picked up some more keys which are useful for unlocking things, as we've seen multiple times. You can unlock special rooms and chests, and chests can have fun stuff in them. And we've got a bunch of money, which kind of sucks, because I really hoped that the donation machine wouldn't have capped out quite so quickly. Ooh, this is an item called Chaos. 
Chaos is a weird item. I'm not going to pick it up right now. Basically, what it does is is it randomizes a lot of the items that you get in different ways. It's kind of hard to explain without going to, like, a very in-depth explanation of the game's systems and mechanics, which I think this episode is already very talk-heavy, as it is. So, I don't want to cause anybody's head to explode. So I'm sure we'll get that at some point on some run, and I'll explain how it works then. Justice. This card is pretty good. Justice. It gives you some random consumables. But we found our item room. <laughs> I really don't like this item, but we're gonna take it. This item is called the Cursed Eye. What it does is it makes it so that you can charge up your shots instead of firing them regularly. And you can see that your eye starts to flash. And you release them in a little burst like that, which sounds really good. But... You'll see, as you look at our left eye, or our right eye, I guess, there's a brief moment before our eye starts flashing, and when our eye isn't flashing, if we get hit, we get teleported to a random room. Which is why I don't like this item. Why did I take it, you ask? Well, you know, I, I hope that in some way it would provide entertainment value. But in actuality... We gotta take it at some point. You might think, well, why do you have to take it at some point? And that's because, it, I'll be entirely honest with you, there's an achievement you get for having picked up every single item in the game at least once. And we unlocked Kane. So, we're closer to having picked up every single item in the game at least once, and we've unlocked another character. We've unlocked a ton of different characters in this run already, and there's a ton more to unlock, obviously. Uh, but maybe I should explain how and why we've unlocked the characters. Basically, each of them has different starting stats, and some of them have a few different starting items, so they provide you with different starts that can provide variation to your runs. Um, and uh, they're unlocked, there's a bunch, and they are all unlocked through various different means. Uh, for instance, uh, we unlocked the character Azazel. It might be Azazel, it might be how you pronounce it, but I prefer Azazel because it sounds stupid when you say Azazel. I'll continue this thought, hold on, let me just go in here. Alright, there's two items, and there's a chest that opened up and had a troll bomb in it, which is fine. Uh, and I'm going to take... You see, I'm gonna do the silly thing and I'm gonna take both of these uh, Lord of the Pit the one on the left uh, gives us flying and a little speed boost so we can fly over things like rocks now uh, and the other one that we picked up a uh, little horn I think they changed how it works in repentance so I don't a hundred percent know how it works on to the next floor but as I was saying uh, Azazel uh, you unlock by taking a certain amount of deals with the devil in a one run uh, and he's a very interesting starting character we'll probably explain the intric uh, the intricities the intrinsic yeah the intrinsic qualities of each character uh, when we play it for the first time but that was how we unlocked uh, Azazel this was a library that you can sometimes find uh, libraries have books in them. This library had the Book of Shadows in it, which has the same charge time as, uh, Anarchist Cookbook, except it gives you a brief period of invincibility instead of putting bombs everywhere. So even though Anarchist Cookbook has been good for us, I think it'll be more worthwhile to go with, uh, Book of Shadows, because I like that item better. We also uh, unlocked the character Lazarus, and the way you unlock him is by having a bunch of spirit hearts at one point in a run, uh, which is, you know, not too difficult. A lot of the basic uh, characters that we unlock uh, aren't actually super difficult. Like, for instance, Kane, the last character that we unlocked, we unlocked him by uh, having 55 cents, which is, you know both really easy and also really common. 
the maximum that you can usually have of any of the consumables is 99, and there's been tons of runs that I've had where I straight up got 99 and everything. Like, so much so that it's not even a, an uncommon occurrence at all. But we're doing pretty well. I would like to have more HP, but on this run, I think we'll win when we get beat the boss regardless, so... I don't know. It is a great run so far, though. This item... I love this item. This is Parasitoid. It makes it so that some of your tears are eggs, and the eggs give you spiders. We also unlocked the school bag. We unlocked that because we went to every single shop in the run, and I wish that I could play the freaking donation machine, but that's fine. We also picked up the PhD. It makes all the pills good, or at least not bad, which is useful. Not super useful because, you know, the run's gonna be over, you know, in the next five or so minutes. But, you know, I like to live dangerously, what can I say? So, we did find the boss, but just to give us the best chance of killing the boss, I'm going to go throughout the entire floor and just look for more spirit hearts. We're not super likely to find more. But if we do, that'd be great, because I don't like dying, and it would be incredibly disappointing to get this far and then die. The boss of this floor, which we'll see in a minute, uh, you know how I mentioned that there were pools, essentially, of bosses that each floor can have? Uh, the boss of floor 6 is always the same, so we'll see them in a second. Oh, and there's a curse room. Which could give us more spear parts, so I think I'm gonna try it. The good thing about flying, well, many, one of the many good things about flying, uh, is that once you have it, you can enter curse rooms uh, without taking damage. You still take damage when you exit them, but, you know, you get to enter them and exit them for half price, essentially. So, pretty cool. Right, And the room had nothing, but we can use the Book of Shadows to gain inv invincibility and get out of there without taking any damage. Now you might think to yourself, well, Ryder, why didn't you take some of those, some of the Book of Shadows for the boss? Aren't you going to need that? And you'd be right, except there's a battery here, so we can recharge our shit and be good to go. Secret room, which just had money in it, which is fine. And I wonder if there'd be like a second secret room? Ayo! Had a black heart in it. That's the first one we've got in this run. Black hearts are just like spirit hearts, except when you use the, uh, when you lose them, you uh, do a bunch of damage to all the enemies in the room all at once. So very useful. Unfortunately, the Book of Shadows invincibility is not permanent, <laughs> and nor does it last very long, so we're just going to have to hope that we don't get teleported. I shouldn't have said that. Dear God on Earth, I should not have said that. We almost killed her. It's fine. Everything's cool. I'm not bothered at all. You'll also probably notice that, due to the nature of this game, there's not going to be anywhere near as much cutting around as is normally in our video in my videos. Uh, or like, at all. So, I don't know if you've grown attached to that style, but it's really gonna be just like me talking non-stop, because apparently that's something that I can do. I'm actually impressed at the fact that I've been able to talk with very little pause so far. So, you know. I'm a little baby and I'm proud of myself. I think now is a good time to use Book of Shadows, because hopefully we'll be able to do a bunch of damage to Mom before uh, it runs out. I was wrong. Okay, there we go. His mother, 
fueled with the desire to serve her god, was bearing down on Isaac. I will do as I am told, my lord. I love you above all else, Isaac's mother repeated to herself. This was the end of the line for Isaac. His mother was far too strong for him. But just as he accepted his fate, God intervened sending an angel down from above to stop his mother's hand. And just like that, it was over. So, that was our first run through The Binding of Isaac Repentance. Technically speaking, the game is called The Binding of Isaac Rebirth. Repentance is just the add-on that they released recently, but Whatever, it doesn't matter, nothing matters really. Uh, so, we are, uh, th this is the end of the episode. We're probably going to play more of this whenever I want to, because I love this game. Uh, I don't think that this is going to be like a, hey, let's play it all the time, always, like Elden Ring is. Uh, but I was depressed today, and I wanted to make a video that was relatively easy to make, so this is what I made, yay! Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to leave a like, comment, or subscribe, any of which would mean the world to me, and I do so hope that you enjoyed the video. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a good one. We also... I realize I just did the outro, but when you beat your first run, you unlock a bunch of stuff. And we'll get to all of this at some point. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a good one.